Okay, welcome back. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a new uh, subject, and which it's called structs. So let's right now I have the solution to the one we did last lesson, and if you remember, we used a pair. That's a C plus plus pair, and we basically made this new pair type, and we used a string and an int. Well, there is another way to do this, and that is to use something called a struct. So what is a struct? So a struct, it's we've learned classes in uh, Python before. It's like a class, but there are no methods involved with it. So you can actually create a new defined data type that encapsulates other datas, but there's no methods except for one method or one function, and that's the CTOR. And CTOR stands for the constructor. This is a C++ term that you should now um, um, memorize, I guess. CTOR stands for constructor, and it is the function that gets called when you declare a variable of that data type. So let's take a look at an example. Okay, so here is an example. I'm using a uh, struct called stud for student. And I'm the, the way you basically define it is outside of int main. Okay, you want to define it before because we're going to use it in, in main here on line 12. And then you just open it up with braces like a function. And you just type in the data types that you want this struct to contain. So in this case, we're going to use a string and an integer. Notice one syntactic uh, point, And that is it ends with a semicolon. Okay, that's a that's easy to forget because unlike a, f a function which doesn't end in a semicolon. So this is how we define this new data type. Once it's defined, look at on line 12, we can go ahead and define two variables of that type. Now once we define those variables, we can then access their members, which is uh, in this case name and age and we can assign them. Of course, name is a string, age is an int. And we can even use assignment operator to assign, because I've made two of them, so I'm assigning B to A. Now this line 15 has some gotchas. So we'll go into it later, perhaps in the course, or maybe I will just mention it now. It might go beyond the scope of this course, but I will mention something right now. Be careful. In this case, there's nothing, there's no danger associated with this situation uh, because everything in the struct is um, it's being declared just normally. There's no uh, pointers where we have to deal with dynamic memory allocation. In that situation, if we did have pointers and dynamic memory allocation, we would actually have to overload the assignment operator. And be careful about that because it could create problems. So um, maybe that's just a note for the future. But here, you'll see that we can also print the uh, aspects of B in this case. And if we run this, I think it's pretty clear what the output will be. Bob 19. So this is this is fine code. It works okay, but I want to show you how you can um, extend this. So one thing I will note, though, that we haven't defined the constructor function here. Notice there's nothing defined in here as being a constructor function. And however, we're, we are able to create 
A and B and declare them without any issue. C++ will actually by default create the constructor and everything's okay. However, we can customize this and that's where our next example is going to go to. Okay, so here's our next example and in this one notice it's the same uh, same type of struct except I, I, I not only have string and age or string and int here but I also have what looks like us I'm, I'm create like this looks like a function call right because it's got the brackets so this is the constructor and this one's the default constructor okay this is the default CTOR and this one is this uh, this one's more specialized so think about you know like I'll give you an example so that you can relate it to your past previous knowledge you know we can I can go int X like this but I can also go int Y and I can specify an uh, an initial like I'm doing two things here right I'm I'm declaring it and I'm initializing it in one this is only a declaration so this is the default one and I don't have to write this here is the actual implementation of it notice that the implementation of the constructor goes outside the class okay not in any function I usually uh, yeah, you should put it or well, it has to go after right but I think it does a anyways uh, I've never put it before but my point is that there's nothing going on here notice these two braces are empty so now in this case I'm explicitly stating the default constructor but if you remember in our previous code okay here is my previous example on the right and here's my newer one on the left notice that the default constructor is working here I don't have to specify one so so this is optional this one and this one you can leave it off however however in this case since I'm actually um, specifying a specific one here on line 7 I'm gonna put the the default one in okay um, just because now if I if I take these guys off here let me show you let's actually get rid of wait let's get rid of this one we don't need this one anymore so if I if I comment this line out oops gotta go into insert mode and if I comment this one out so watch now if I try and compile it it's not gonna work it says no matching function to the default argument okay for stud a so in this case because I'm actually specifying one here that is um, specific I need to actually uh, declare the default one as well so now now it should be okay if I run this uh, oh yeah I'm unused variables that's okay that was no issue it's still compiled fine I can get rid of this line and this line so if I run it yep it works no problems now um, what is this one we haven't talked about this one yet notice that I haven't put any variables here so you know I could put in n and a for my variables here and I could compile it again and in fact it should just it's just fine either way it doesn't complain either way is okay so I want you to know that variables in the header or the declaration of the constructor function is optional okay I think it's kind of nice just to leave them off just to explicitly be clear to the programmer that you don't have to put them in there um, but you do need the data types that's not optional okay now let's go down here notice so what is this thing this thing is the implementation of the specific one of the overloaded 
constructor function. And in this case, we are supplying the name and the age variable, or yeah, to the constructor, and we're going to assign them. N is assigned to name, and A is assigned to age. And so this one, line 21, Mary 22, should work just fine. Notice we can now declare one without any arguments, right? The default one, or line 21, which has specific ones. Okay, and if I, as we, as I showed you earlier, this runs no problem and it compiles fine. Um, again, I'm assigning one to the other, so I'm actually over. Uh, I'm kind of overwriting B now. If I, if I end up copying this line and pasting it here, and then I run it again. Notice you'll see Mary 22 before Bob 19. So I don't have any new line characters in there, so that's fine. So that's my example of overloading the constructor. OK, here's my next example. And in this one, I am actually using an initialization list for the constructor. So the way that this works is, and this is the key here, on line 8, notice I have a full colon after the default constructor. That's the key here. Remember, it's a full colon. After the full colon, I can now have a list of the items with their, the argument that I want to pass in. Okay. So what I've done here is I have provided default values for my default constructor. Okay. Therefore, unlike this one that I showed you before, uh, you know, like if you create stud A here, I'm I can actually after creating this, I can now actually uh, here. Let me just copy this line. I can actually just come up here and and just you know there. Now this usually wouldn't be possible, but now it will be. Notice if I run it, I get zero. And by the way, the name is empty string, right? So the name is empty string. Now I can make it something here. Uh, it doesn't matter. I could I could make it let's say space or something, and that should be fine too, right? So there's the space. But my point is that y usually, like if you create a variable like this. The default constructor in C++ doesn't initialize anything for you. But we've changed that behavior, and we have created, we have forced the in default initializer to actually provide some value. Okay? Now, you don't have to do that, but you can. <clears throat> Once again, just want to stress that. The reason why this is an initialization list is the colon. And by the way, one more thing, it doesn't have to be inside the struct definition. So I could, for example, watch this. I could copy this line, paste it here, okay? And let's, let's comment this line out now. And then what I would do is now if I'm going to put the initialization list outside, I'm going to have to use uh, my scope resolution to say, yep, it's part of the stud class. So I've commented this out now, and I've put it outside the struct, but now I just have to use this extra syntax. And if I compile this and run it, uh-oh, hold on. All right, sorry, I've actually, once I commented this out, right? I don't have the default constructor's prototype inside the um, struct. So I s at least need stud bracket bracket inside there. And then I can initialize it outside with the initialization list. So there you go. Now, I've also done this uh, again here using an initialization list. 
um, with the one where I actually set the arguments. So that is here. And once again, I can actually do that inside as well. So, okay, so I've basically moved both uh, constructors inside the body of the struct. And in this case, um, the default one I'm actually providing arguments for and the non-default one I have an initialization list also. Remember the initial values come after the full colon okay and they're com and they're comma separated and then we just we have um, braces here which say there's nothing in the body that's why it's an initialization list. So that's that example. Okay so in our next example uh, we'd like to be able to treat these new structs as data that we can print. Notice here on line 16, I'm not actually printing the struct. What I'm doing is I'm printing the members of the struct individually. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to just treat the struct as a regular object that could be inserted into a stream and just go like that. So if I did this, watch what's going to happen now. It's going to fail with a giant amount of errors. Uh, but essentially, the problem is that this operator does not exist, or the, the insertion operator doesn't exist here. That's the reason why this is failing. So now it, we're going to have a really interesting learning opportunity to learn how we can allow this to work. Okay, so here is our solution. We have to actually define the insertion operator. So what is this? And gosh, the syntax looks quite weird. Let's, let's analyze this specifically. And before I show you what this code or why this code is the way it is. Let me show you something on the, on the whiteboard here. So let's kind of make some space and let's discuss C out for a minute because this is the one we have most experience with. Okay, so if I send something to C out, and we all know that I can do this, right? There you go. This is a ve everybody knows that this works and but let's think about this for a second. I want to kind of relate this first of all with Python. And I know I'm not teaching Python here, but with Python, notice that the print statement is a function. How do you know it's a function? Well, there's there's the brackets. Okay? That's a function call. So question, where is the function call for C out? Is it supposed to could couldn't they have written it something like that? The problem is is that this is wrong. And the reason why it's wrong is because C out is not the name of the function. Wait, then but isn't that what we're typing here? Yes, that is. But that's not the function that's being called. So where is the function that we're being called? That is being called. And the answer is, it's this guy. That's right. This is the function. Well then, if that's the function, then when you make a function call, don't you actually go like this and put the arguments in there? True. Now think about this. The first thing and the second thing in the function call, the first thing is the, is the stream that, you're, that whatever you're sending to is going, and this, the, and this is the object that's going to the stream. Okay? So essentially, here, we're sending stuff to the C out stream, and the object we're sending is, well, in this case, we're sending the string hello. 
But we don't write it this way when we call it in C++. We write it this way. Why? Well, let's stop for a moment and let's go back to this example. And notice very, very clearly, although this has never been discussed before in this course, notice that we can again daisy chain or tack on another insertion operator. But the question is, where is this one going to? Like, where is this one sending to? I think it should be very clear that this is also sending to C out. So that means that if this is a function call, then this box must have a return value. And it must be what this accepts. If you think about it, right, what, wh where is this sending to? It's sending to C out. Therefore, this box must return the C out object, the C out stream. That's the reason why we can continue daisy chaining more insertion operators in the same line and they all go to the same location. Okay? This is, this is the way C++ works. So let's think about this now. This is the function call, right? And this is the first argument on the left. On the right is the second argument. Okay, now if you understand all that, and remember, one last thing, the return value has to be the same as the first input argument, which is the output stream. I'll say it again. The return value has to be the same stream as that was accepted into the first argument. Okay? Now look at the code. The first argument is a stream, and by the way, it's by reference. We don't want to copy streams. Remember, default in C is copy by value. We definitely don't want to copy a stream. We want to use the same stream, C out, in this case. And but we're gonna we have to give it a variable. So we'll call it we, we can call it anything we like, but let's call it O just because it's an output stream. And then now this is actually um, you know we're gonna pass S which is the student, and we're going to pass it by reference. Again, we're not going to make a copy. And if we're, cop if we're, if we're um, passing it by reference, we need to make sure that it's not modified. So the way to do this is to use const. So in other words, we're passing the address. We are uh, not going to modify s. So we're going to send it const by reference. Okay. Then, look at the implementation. All we do is, uh, now we go in and get the members of s, the struct. We get dot name, and we set, now that's a string, and the insertion operator is defined for a string. Okay, and we send it to o. What was o? Well, look, o is, when we call it, o is c out. So c out gets passed to o. Okay, so in, in fact, s.name is actually sending to c out. Then, again, string, integer, all defined. Those work. But then, on line 12, we return o. That's very important. Because you have to return o. Number one, we've explicitly stated that this function is going to return an output stream by reference. Okay, we're, we're, and, and this is by reference, notice here. It is by reference, so perfect, okay, good. But we have to do that in order for this to work, okay? Because now, where the heck is ENDL gonna go? You know, well, ENDL is gonna go to whatever this returns. And this is gonna return O, which was C out. So now ENDL is also going to go to C out. 
I hope that makes sense. It's a really, I feel like I've tried to make as clear of an explanation as to why C++ or, or how this type of syntax in C++ functions with the insertion operator. Okay, and this is the standard. So in other words, if you overload other insertion operators, this is the standard arguments that you will require. And by the way, let's just run this and let's see if it works. And it does. We get Bob 19. So in this case, we just had to send B to C out. And by the way, this will work not only for uh, C out, it'll work for any output stream. Like to a file, let's say, for example. Hint, hint. Okay, let's, let's go over this one last time, just so that it's crystal clear. Notice that the output stream is, so this is the function, okay? The output stream is our first argument, and notice here, O stream by reference, that's, that's what C out gets passed to, okay? Notice our second argument is the string that's on the right hand side of the insertion operator. That gets, actually, sorry, that doesn't get passed to, uh, in this case we're using a stud. So I'm this is an, an example of a student. This is just the example of using string. But my, my point here is that the way that C out works is that when this returns, it has to return an output stream. And the reason it does, and it, it is re returning an output stream here, you can see on line 12. The reason it, it needs to is because right here, you can daisy chain another insertion operator such that its left hand argument must be an output stream. And notice, it has to be the same output stream as the first one. It's also C out. So therefore, this function, it must return the same stream that it accepted as the first argument. And notice that's exactly what we're doing. We're accepting output stream O by reference, and we're returning output stream O, and notice it's by reference to, right? And there's no copying streams. So hopefully that explains what happens. So essentially, going back to the code, we need to explicitly overload the insertion operator uh, for every data type or every struct that we create. Okay? Okay, onward we move. Next thing we got to learn is what if we wanted, now obviously, you know, if we had integers, is 4 less than 5? Yep, sure. Well, what about structs? Can I do something like this? Is, is A less than B? Well, this isn't going to work right now. Um, and, you know, I can, it doesn't matter what I do here. This is, this is going to fail because the less than operator is not defined. Let's try it. And, wow, okay, again, giant amount of errors. Holy smokes, that's a lot. Okay, uh, there it is. <laughs> no, no. No less than operator defined for stud types. There you go. It's all, it's all at the beginning. So now you might ask, well, you know, why would you need less than? And the answer is actually less than is super, super important. And that's because if we were to include algorithm in this program and we were to try and sort student structs or stud structs, then we would need the less than operator defined. So now the question is, what could we, what code do we have to write in order for this less than operator to work? And that's what's next. 
OK, so in order to do this, let's think about, rem let's remember, what does if require? Well, if requires a Boolean. So this function is going to return a bool. And the name of it is going to be operator less than. Okay. Now the question now is, what is this function going to accept? Once again, just like, just like the insertion operator, the first argument is the left hand. Okay? And the right argument, the right side argument, is the second argument in the function argument list. So the question now is, obviously, we're, we're passing uh, stud types. So I could say stud, and let's just use x and y in this case. There it is. And let's open up the function. And now let's write the body of the function. And this is now this is the part where we get to decide how this function is going to behave. So should we say that students should be sorted or less than based on their name? I say let's do it based on their age. So in that case, we'd have to go return, and we would say x dot age less than y dot age. And that's it. Let's see now if this works. Okay, let's see if we can run it now. And it does. Okay. Now notice um, we could just say we could say. Um, you know, uh, uh, in this case, C out A dot name is is younger. We could just say uh, something like this is younger than uh, B dot name. There. Okay. So that's that's the if statement. Let's let's compile it and run it again. Uh, oops. Okay, so we figured out why this isn't working. It's not because we did anything wrong. <laughs> it's because A and B are equal to each other. So we should fix that, and uh, maybe then we'll get the uh, proper output that we're looking for. So. Let's create b dot name. Let's say it's uh, let's say it's uh, let's say I don't know Sarah or something, and let's say uh, Sarah is uh, well. Let's say she has. Let's make Sarah older. Okay. Let's make her twenty. Okay. Because I want. I want A to be less than B. I want, I want, I want that. So let's, uh, let's now run this code. And you notice it works now. It says uh, Sarah 20, and then it says Bob is younger than Sarah. Perfect. OK, that works. However, this is what I want to communicate with you guys. This is not the proper way to do, to write, even though this did work, OK, and it, it probably makes sense, this is not the proper way to write to, to um, overload the less than operator for this struct. What's right? What's wrong with it? And I'll tell you what's wrong. The standard way and the proper way of doing this is that the two arguments that are passed should not be passed by value. Because what we're doing here is we're actually copying x and y. We shouldn't do that. So we should pass them by reference. And in addition, because we're passing them by reference, we definitely do not want the less than operator to modify x and y. So we should, although we're not, obviously you can tell we just have one line in our body of the function. But it doesn't matter. We still have to do this properly. We still need to explicitly state that x and y are going to be passed as const by reference. So number one, we're not making a copy, right? We're, we're, we're actually co 
um, well, essentially we're passing the pointer, but we're passing the same object, not a copy, and we don't want it to, to modify it, so we're going to say const. That's the proper way to do it, and if we now uh, re recompile and run this, it still works properly, but this is the right way to do it. Okay, so now you see how to overload the less than operator. Now there's a real big advantage as to overloading the less than operator, and especially in comparison to any other operator, like greater than, greater than or equal to, equal to, not equal to. The less than is special. And the reason why it's special is because that's what algorithm sort specifically uses to sort. So let's take a look at our next example. OK, so here's our next example. So we're going to use everything we've learned from before. Now we're making a new struct called person. Same things, right? String and int in there. We've overloaded the less than operator for a person. Again, we're sorting by age. And we've overloaded the uh, insertion operator. Again, exactly as we did as we did before. Okay. And so now we can print the person. But now look, here's the cool part. Way at the top, I'm including algorithm now. And so I'm doing file, uh, we're back to file IO. We're incorporating everything we've learned into file IO. And now I am s line 46. I'm sorting. Notice now, notice how different this is than when I used the pair. So if I V split and I, um, here, watch, I'll, show, I'll bring up the pair and I'll show you. There it is. Notice here on the right, this, was the, this is the example we did with the pair. Notice sort here on line 30 uses a third argument, which was my compare, right? The com and that's, that's how my compare worked. It's comparing pairs. Well, look, this is similar but very different. In this example here now, what I'm doing, this is the new, the new one on the left, I've defined the less than operator, not a, not a specific function, but now I'm essentially the, the code inside is the same, right? I mean, here I'm doing dot age less than dot age p1, p2 instead of um, x and y for the pair. But what's interesting now is that my sort line doesn't need a third argument as it did here. Now sort will sort by default using the less than operator and everything should work out fine. And let's try it and let's see if it works. Okay, so let's run this. And there we go, we ran it. Now let's take a look at the output file. The output file is, you can see here, it's called new data. So let's go cat new data. And sure enough, it is sorted based on age. Perfect, that's really nice. Except there's one other thing which we can improve upon, and that is line number 38. Notice here I'm grabbing both the name and the age, and I'm doing them in the while loop. So essentially what I'm doing is I am using the extraction operator for the string, and then I'm using the extraction operator for an integer, right? But what if I was to not only overload the insertion operator, but also the extraction operator? Let's take a look and see. OK, here it is. Take a look, line 45, right there. Ta-da! I just say, from the input file stream, extract temp. And what's temp? Temp is a person. So wait, how do we do the extraction operator? Well, guess what? The same way we did the insertion operator, right there, except this time it's going to be an input stream by reference. And of course, the arrows are the opposite direction. And the first argument is the input stream. 
again, by reference. Now I'll use the variable i here. But wait, there is one difference. There is one difference. Notice here that in the uh, insertion operator, I, I, I'm not modifying anything, right? So person, the struct, is by const reference. And notice here, I'm not using const. Why not? Think about this for a second. Because what? In it. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm putting, I'm, I'm, I'm putting something into p.name and p.age. So p.name and p.age are changing, so therefore I can't pass it by const. But I'm still passing it by reference, though. So I mean, it's really simple code, right? I mean, if you understand output stream operator, the uh, sorry, if you understand the insertion operator, then you should understand the extraction operator. It's very, very similar code. Don't, like I said, the only difference is we can't pass the struct by const because we're going to change it, because we're putting data into it, right? And so that's what I'm doing here. And I think this looks cleaner uh, than what we had before with the ampersand, ampersand. OK, let's run this. So uh, here we go. So we'll go F5. And yep, it runs. And again, the output. And it works as well. So maybe we'll, uh, we'll call it end of the lesson here. And next period, or next lesson, we'll learn about uh, command line arguments. See you next time.